how do you think someone could be more specific or de define their brand? I believe that every person, business, service, message, church, any organization, they all need something called a brand Bible. And whether you're Nike, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, they have a brand Bible that's thousands of pages thick. And in the brand Bible, they talk about their ethics, their morals, their values, every aspect about how their fonts, their typography, everything. So all of their messaging is consistent. Whether they're a billboard or social media or a magazine or TV, everything is consistent across all the board from everyone speaking about it, all the senior management, but humans, regular people, little kids, we can create a brand Bible. And there's only like uh, 10 or 11 core elements to the brand Bible. Number one is what is your brand statement? Like how would you uh, express yourself in one sentence? Who are you? What's your personal brand story? Tell me that in one paragraph, tell it to me in one sheet, have it all written out. So you don't have to think about it on the fly, have it written out. What are your brand adjectives? Well, let's think about TikTok or Clubhouse. Clubhouse is very loving, it's inclusive, it is paying it forward, it's empathy driven, it's sharing, decentralizing knowledge, democratizing knowledge. These are great brand adjectives. So now we should have those adjectives that describe Rebecca. Maybe she's intelligent, maybe she's inclusive. But you wanna have like a tagline, so Nike is just do it. McDonald's is I'm loving it. So a tagline is really helpful because it dumbs down your brand. So when even an intern is doing a post on social media, they don't need to go to Rebecca and say, hey, is this on brand for you? Once they know the tagline, well, does it exude that we're just doing it? Um, maybe you shouldn't post a picture of pizza and ice cream because we're about doing it. Let's yeah. post a picture about throwing away the carbs and go running. That's on brand. So these are just like certain uh, ways to do it. You know, and then there's stuff like, like I said, the brand statement, there's what is the unique selling proposition? What's your customer profile? When you're speaking, who do you speak to in the audience? Well, I speak to my mom, my sister, my best friend, and a really cool Gen Z. Those are your avatars. Your Forever 21 or Ulta Beauty Supply, you know exactly who you're talking about. So when you're talking, you don't talk like you're talking to somebody who's irrelevant, like a 60 year old Harley Davidson guy, you're not talking in his language because yeah. that's not your core audience. Right. So define that core audience and then figure out who are your brand affiliations. If you want to work with Nike or you want to work with Gatorade, then your look and feel should resonate with that. You shouldn't be random. Maybe I shouldn't post pictures of me, I don't know, getting drunk and in a bar fight every other day. Yeah. Those brands don't want to work with you because there's yeah. no brand affinity. And then ultimately there's like the logo, there's your typography, how do you talk to people? And then finally, like the most important is what are your goals? What do you want to uh, accomplish in a month, a year, three, five years, write those goals down. And then you should always be working towards those goals. So your brand Bible is in alignment to that. So if Nike is all about 1 million new customer acquisitions, well, how many is that per month, per week? per day and every day we should be working incrementally towards that within the confines of our brand Bible for consistency. So you're suggesting that people's goals and targets also be included in their brand Bible. Does that mean that it would, that the brand Bible might even adapt or change as the year goes on? You know, you can adapt and change it every day because all people adapt and change. Businesses yeah. change, you know, tomorrow there could be a pandemic. And now all of a sudden we went from brick and mortar to digital. So yeah. now our whole brand Bible changes. What's yeah. our digital presence? If we spent a billion dollars on live events, now it's going to be online. How are we going to pivot? What does that look like? What platforms, who are we going to work with in the digital world? Cause those people might be different than our physical world friends.